Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to do the third version of our swappable series, which is of course called the Delta. And if you guys haven't seen before, we actually have a uh, swappable series, which is the first one being the Nutball, uh, which was help a good trainer, uh, basically a very stable platform, very simple to build, especially if it's your very first plane. The second one was uh, in our Choose Your Prop Adventure, and that was the FT Flyer swappable. And uh, that one offered a basic airframe, which is very nice and conventional, also very nice self-stabilizing features. Uh, and this this is our third one and this is for when you want to go ahead and start learning ailerons and uh, bank and yank techniques uh, and also to do some basic aerobatics such as flying upside down. It offers no dihedral but the KF step does give it a nice amount of lift and give it very docile uh, characteristics to get you over that hump. So as we go along we're going to go ahead and show you how to build these different versions. So once you build your main airframe and have your common motor, common battery pack and uh, radio equipment you can simply swap these for a very affordable price. It's virtually a piece of foam board and two servos and you're ready to go. But before we start that, you need to go ahead and download the plans, and as always, they're going to be on flighttest.com. There'll be a link below on the information column. Go to our article about this, download the plans, cut it out, and we'll go ahead and get started. Now that you have your plans downloaded, I've hoped you went ahead and traced out the pieces that you need to cut out. And mainly the only two pieces you need to cut out are going to be your fuselage and your fence. Uh, the actual main body, or I should say the main wing of the uh, airframe, is going to have certain parts cut out and other parts folded over to make the KF step. And one thing I'd strongly recommend is when you trace out your uh, main wing on this Delta design, uh, don't go ahead and trace your fuselage and your fins on that because we're going to be using the remaining portion of that uh, foam board to fold over to make your KF step. And if you go ahead and cut that area out, you're going to have to cut separate pieces for the KF step, and it's just not as clean of an install. So go ahead and get a second uh, sheet of Dollar Tree foam board, cut out your fins and cut out your fuselage. And speaking of fuselage, we're going to go ahead and assemble that right now. As you can see, this is a one-piece uh, fuselage. Uh, we call it a folded fuselage because we're going to be using the paper on the bottom of the uh, Dollar Tree foam board to act as a joiner for us. And that's going to make it look very nice and very strong as well. But what you want to do is, is where the red lines are, just score that about two-thirds of the way through. Uh, once you do that, fold back the side of the fuselage 180 degrees and then use your fingernail and just simply pop out the remaining section of foam. Once you've done that, go ahead and fold the sides of the fuselage up over top of the bottom plate of the fuselage. That'll give you the correct size and dimensions for your build. Take careful time doing this to make sure everything fits nice and tight. If it's too tight, you're not going to uh, have a good fit and the fuselage is going to be like this. If it's too loose, it's going to concave. So make sure it's done exactly according to the score lines on your plants and it'll look beautiful. Now that we have the material between our score lines removed for our fuselage, we're ready to go ahead and do the final assembly on it. And what you're going to want to do is one side at a time. You don't want to try to do both because if you hurry, you may get a fuselage that's crooked and no one wants that. You want it to be nice and perpendicular. Particular, uh, so everything fits nicely in the wings because everything's going to join on to this uh, body and you're also going to use this body over and over again for different airframes so take your time and do it right go ahead and start with say the right side put a thin bead of glue and when I say thin I do mean thin just a tiny bead of glue down in the cavity that you've cut out and then fold the side cheek of the fuselage over top of the bottom plate that'll give you the right dimensions go ahead and hold that perpendicular until the glue is set up and you're ready for the next side after you've gotten your fuselage all glued together, the next step is to put your firewall on. And what you're going to want to do is take some 8th inch light ply or you can use polycarbonate. Any material you like for uh, firewalls you're welcome to use. But take the plants and then go ahead and cut one out. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and put a bead of glue on all three corners of your uh, fuselage. And then you're going to want to go ahead and glue on your firewall to your fuselage. Once you've glued on your firewall, you're going to want to go ahead and secure it with extreme packing tape or any kind of packing tape that you like. We like extreme packing tape because it has cordage going on both X and Y axes, which keeps it from tearing and ripping along the corded lines like a lot of other packing tapes do. Go ahead and do the sides first, wrap it around your firewall, and then do the bottom, all of them overlapping the firewall at least to the opposite corner. By doing this, you're going to securely make the firewall and your fuselage one piece, and there's no way it'll ever pull out. Now that our fuselage is done, we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and we're going to start on your airframe. And to do the airframe is very simple. All you need to do is start by copying down either dimensions or tracing it. And for you guys over there that use the metric system, I will put the metric dimensions on there as well for you. So you don't have to worry about converting to inches. But go ahead and, and draw out your uh, airframe on your poster board or your Dollar Tree foam board or whatever you choose to use. And uh, go ahead and remove the section that say to remove first. I'm going to have this color coded. It'll be in black. And uh, go ahead and cut those lines out. Once you're done 
removing and cutting everything you need to remove, go ahead and go back to where the red lines are and just score those. That'll be your tail feathers and also the leading edge of your delta wing where it's going to turn into the KS step. Once you get that done, crack everything loose, make sure it moves freely, and we'll go ahead and start putting in your hinge lines for your elevants. To make your elevons, what you want to do is flip over your airframe so the paper or elevons can fold 180 degrees back onto the airframe. Once you've done that, take a steel ruler or, or some kind of guide and uh, lay it just about a quarter of an inch back or a little bit less uh, to give yourself a good 45 degree angle. Make sure you don't cut through the paper that's folded in the middle of your airframe and your elevons or that's going to take away your hinge. If you do it, that's not a big deal. Just go ahead and take some tape and make a hinge out of that. But if you can keep from cutting through the paper, it'll work great as a hinge for you. Once you've done that on both sides, you're ready for the next step. After we've cut the hinge line for our elevons, we're ready for the probably the most complicated uh, part in this whole entire process, and that is making your KF step. To make the KF step, what you're going to want to do is make a center line reference on the back part in between your two elevons. That'll be the center of your airframe. And keep that center line bold enough where you can see it because we're going to be measuring for our servo placement and also for our fins to, to go off of that center line. So go ahead and put it so it's visible at all times. Once you've done that, fold back your right or your left side of the material that you put a slot in on the leading edge, fold it back on top of your airframe, and then go ahead and create a score line with a straight edge going from the tip of your leading edge all the way to that reference line. Once you've done that, go ahead and flip over your airframe and then remove the excess on your right or left trailing edge that overlaps on the side of your wings. That will go ahead and give you a nice flesh cut. You don't want to go ahead and go off of plans because if you're off just a little bit, it'll look a little bit messy. It's much easier to match it up to your current cuts that you've made when you removed your material. Go ahead and do that to both sides. Join it in the middle, flip it around, and make sure that everything meets nice and flush once you're happy and ready to remove material to give you your 40% KF step. The next step is to remove the material from your KF step to give it a 40% KF step. And the way you're going to do this is with your foam that's going to be your KF step, fold it down on the airframe, measure from the leading edge down the center line of your wing, six and a half inches, and also at the wing tips, an inch and a half. That'll give you a rough 40% KF step and give you the best performance. Once you go ahead and make your reference marks, flip your airframe over, unfold it, cut out that material, then flip it back. If you're happy with the way everything looks and everything meets up nice and together, go ahead and glue it down securely, leaving it to dry on a flat board. You don't want to go ahead and have it bent at this time or your wing may be twisted. Hold it till it's done and glued nice and firm and you're ready for your next step. Now that you have your wing built, the next step is to unite the fuselage and your wing together. And this is going to be a removable fuselage, so you don't want to glue anything down unless you want to make it permanent after you put your radios in. But what you're going to want to do is take the plans and lay them over top of your airframe and make your reference marks for your uh, tabs from your fuselage slash to go in and also for your servo cutout and for the front nose to be taken off so it meets the fuselage properly. That's where your two dowels are going to actually tab through the firewall to hold it down in the front. Also, go ahead and take out the area in the back where the rear barbecue skewer goes to be your rear hold down as well. Once you're happy with the fit, it's time to move on to the next step. Now that your fuselage goes into your airframe nicely, the next step is to put your front alignment dowels and also your rear wing hold down in place. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use bamboo skewers for this because it's very strong, very light, and readily available and also very cheap, which we also like. So to do this, it's very simple. You're going to simply want to, on the back uh, wing hold down, uh, cut your bamboo skewer uh, to fit in between the two notch reliefs uh, that your fuselage goes into, making sure that you don't go into the notch area or else your fuselage won't be able to go up into there. And with the front uh, wing alignment dowels, what you're going to want to do is actually put your airframe and your fuselage together, take the pointy end of your barbecue skewer, and then as you're turning, go ahead and push it through the foam perpendicular to your firewall uh, for about maybe an inch and a half or so. And uh, as you're turning, it'll actually separate the foam and make a nice cavity in there. Once you're happy with the depth of it, uh, go ahead and do that to both sides. And then while the fuselage is still on the airframe, just crack it enough loose to uh, get your hot glue gun in there. Fill it with a few drops of hot glue and then reinsert two dowels in there. Uh, once you've reinserted your two dowels, cut them about a half an inch ahead of the firewall and then pull you out your airframe, hopefully while the glue is still drying. That way any excess glue that is squeezed out won't adhere your airframe to your firewall. Once you're happy with the fit, go ahead and round out the front of your alignment dowels and you're all done.
Our fuselage and our wing are now one, and the next step is to put on the fins. The reason why we waited for the fins until this step is it's much easier to lay the airframe or the wing upside down without the fins getting in the way. If you put them on prematurely, what you're going to have to do is support it without trying to damage your fins, and ultimately you're going to end up with dinged up fins. You want these things to be nice and perpendicular. And the way we do this is we actually go to our back reference lines that's so important to us, and we measured an inch and a half from each side. Once we did this, we took a right angle triangle, and we went along the back line of the hinge line of the elevons to uh, create two perpendicular lines going up. Now it's very crucial, double check this to make sure that both lines are parallel and also perpendicular to the rear hinge line because the hinge line uh, and the center line should be perpendicular to each other. Uh, once you've gotten your hinge lines, go ahead and take your fins that you've cut out in the beginning. Uh, take out just a little bit of material so that when you, uh, actually we, we kind of copied the F-22, we actually made the, uh, the fins angle outwards a little bit. And I do have an angle gauge on the plans that you can cut out of your foam board to uh, to actually create that angle and to match that angle. It's just one that looked nice. It's nothing scientific about it. Uh, but go ahead and remove a little bit of material on both sides of your fins, making sure not to remove the same angle so both fins equal or lean to the left or the right. And then go ahead and glue it on one at a time, waiting for it to drive each one, uh, between each one. Once you're done and you're happy with the results and they're both even, you're ready for the next step. Our next step is to put the electronics in. Now that we have our airframe basically built, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with our servos, our control horns, and our push rods. Now this is going to be the part that's going to stay on your airframe. The motor, the speed control, and the receiver, and the landing gear and everything else are going to stay with your power pod. That way you basically only have to buy two servos for every different airframe you have, unless we get into a four-channel airplane in the future. We don't know if that'll happen. But go ahead and take uh, your 9-gram servos. That's what the, the slot was cut out for. If you use a different size servo, maybe 5-gram or bigger, go ahead and cut your your, uh, cut your hole to fit that servo size. Once you got your servos installed, go ahead and put your control horns in. Now the control horns, the most important part about that is that both control horns run parallel to the center line and that they go back and where your control horns go into, the holes that you uh, have for adjustments on your throws are also just above your uh, hinge line. If they're forward or back of that, you're not going to have even throw and on an Elevon controlled airplane it's very important. You'll find if you do it wrong you're going to have uh, when you give up elevator, you're going to have a bank to the left or the right, or your aileron is going to be stronger one way or the other. So go ahead and make sure that your holes on your hinge or control horns are directly above your hinge line and you'll be in good shape. Once you've gotten that done, go ahead and join the two together with a push rod. There's many different methods of doing this, but what I like to do is by put a conventional Z-bend in, in a thin gauge wire and uh, take that into your servo arm. Once you've done that, go ahead and mark back where the uh, control horn is going to have to do a 90 degree and pass through your control horn. And I like to do something called a modified Z-Bend. And that's where the Z-Bend, instead of going in a typical Z fashion, actually bends off to a 90 degree angle. That way you can actually turn it with a pair of pliers and adjust your holes on the field, but it won't come out on its own. All right, now the servos are on the airframe, it's time to go ahead and put our motor on to our, uh, I don't know if you want to call it power pod, fuselage, whatever you want to call it. But uh, normally we use our 1300 kV uh, 24 gram motor from Hobby King. Uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and put on pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is it's found locally at a company called lasertoys.com. Uh, Dan and Diane there are wonderful people. They've helped out in many pinches and I've gotten a lot of products from them. So if you ever need to get any motors locally, lasertoys.com sells an amazing motor called a Blue Wonder. They also have a motor called the Blue monster which is 1700 kV and would really make a delta like this just fly crazy good. So uh, you can go either way with this uh, airframe but in this case I'm going to go ahead and put this blue wander on uh, to fly it. It's virtually the same thing just found locally. To put the motor on what we're going to first do is we're going to go ahead and uh, center it up on our uh, hole that we have designated on the firewall plans and uh, mark out and drill pilot holes for the screws. Once those pilot holes are drilled just simply screw in your firewall, fasten down your motor using the allen screws uh, making sure that your wire wires bend to one side or the other. Uh, once your wires go to the one side, cut a relief in the side of the fuselage, hook up your speed control, and then tuck the whole uh, thing inside of your fuselage so you don't have your wires dangling. Now that our motor is on, the next step is to install the barbecue skiers that are going to fasten our uh, our landing gear and hold it to the fuselage and also act as a battery hold down. Uh, now this will also act in for the Delta as a way to hold the battery um, in the case if you need to switch CG, but you'll find the heavier the battery you need to do, you actually need to move it back, so we use Velcro for that. Um, but what you want to do is uh, go ahead and use the marks referenced on the plans and uh, drive your barbecue skewer just above the bottom plate of the fuselage, clean through nice and perpendicular to the fuselage. Go ahead and cut it off about a half an inch or a centimeter um, on each side, and you're ready to go ahead and make your landing gear. To make your landing gear, 
take a piece of 0.7 millimeter stock uh, music wire and we cut it to 12 inches long. Once we cut it to 12 inches long, we went to the center point, which is 6 inches, and bent roughly a 45 degree angle. From this point on, we referred to the uh, plans uh, with the landing gear top and side profiles to match the angles up. But from the center bend, it's an inch and a half out, and then the next bend will actually be your two main legs of your landing gear. Go ahead and match that profile up onto your plans, uh, just laying it, simply laying it over, and then the last part will be to bend out uh, parallel from your uh, side legs. Um, your mounts for your wheels and that's going to be roughly three quarters of an inch. Once everything matches the plans and you're happy, go ahead and poke holes on the fuselage uh, in front and behind of your bamboo skewers uh, and fasten it securely with zip ties as you see here in the video. Well, landing gears need wheels, and this is going to be our next step. We're going to go ahead and install our wheels. It can be any size you like. We're using little one-inch wheels, but uh, if you have some rough terrain, go ahead and go to two-inch. It doesn't add much weight, and uh, this plane, you can shift the battery to make everything balance out. Also on our plans, there's a little rough sketch of a uh, suggested tail skid you can put on. You can really do anything you want, but this is just a simple little tail skid to keep, as you saw in our review. Uh, we were kind of uh, grinding the back elevons against the ground, so I went ahead and put a little tail skid in there so you guys can can, uh, can lift it up just enough to keep everything from acting like an eraser on the gravel. Uh, go ahead and install that as you see in the video and then also put your prop saver and your prop on and you're ready to go ahead and install your receiver. Now when we install a receiver it's very important to uh, make sure that you don't put your body onto your fuselage uh, before you go ahead and center up your servos and, and get everything routed all nice and neat. So uh, depending on what kind of system you're using go ahead and uh, hook up your uh, speed control your elevons uh, both left and right and make sure that everything is hooked in properly. If you plug it in backwards you'll find that you can't reverse your servos to make the elevons work properly. So uh, go ahead and make sure that everything is, is working and uh, you know left is left, right is right, up and down are proper and then go ahead and then fasten in and clean up all your wiring. Also make sure your profits aren't in the right direction as well too. That's very important because you don't want to have to take everything apart and, uh, and redo it. Even though it's incredibly simple it's good to do it now. We are on the home stretch friends. Uh, we have our motor in, we have our speed control hooked up and running the right direction. We have our servo screw centered and we also put a little bit of velcro on the receiver so then we can pop it loose to plug in our different uh, bodies or airframes anytime we want. Uh, the next step is going to be to actually fasten down the back of the fuselage and since we're going to be flying this plane right afterwards go ahead and hook up your controls just the way you put them in there. Now it may be more convenient for you to label aileron and elevator on the elevator setup because uh, unfortunately they can get backwards very easy. You can't just look and say okay this is from the rudder uh, servo, this is from the elevator servo. You got to physically think how the elevons mix. So go ahead and label it if you have to, elevon, um, you know, aileron and elevator so you know which slots to plug it in on your receiver every time. It'll just save you time and have the hassle of having to take off your body. Once you've got ahead and done that, go ahead and collect your receiver and then run an industrial size zip tie through loosely uh, around the back dowel that we put in. Uh, what you'll want to do then is uh, physically put your front dowel through the firewall and then take a, a pointy barbecue skewer, go through the reference marks on the back of your fuselage, uh, snagging that, that loop that you've just created. Once you've gotten that, go ahead and join up your fuselage and your wing uh, firmly, and then pull that zip tie nice and snug. You don't have to go overly tight, but just make sure it's snug enough where it'll want to physically uh, not let anything go up. You'll see it's in a slight angle. That's just physically drive the uh, wing into the firewall. Uh, it's just a precaution, just to keep everything positively loaded. Um, go ahead and zip the, uh, pull that zip tie tight and then clip off the excess and you are good to go. The only thing left to do after this point is to uh, put some velcro on the bottom. Uh, because of this as being a flying wing you can't have the battery all the way in the front unless you use a very small battery. I like flying with uh, 800 milliamp, 1000 milliamp and also 500 and because of that you're going to have slight variations in uh, where your CG will be. So go ahead and put a, a long strip of velcro in there. So the next step is is to make sure everything's dialed in right, your, uh, your elevons are working properly and go out and fly it. And that's what I'm going to do right now but first I want to thank Stonecap Productions for sponsoring in this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to challenge you to go ahead and try the swappable series out. If you're a beginner, start with the FT Flyer or the Nutball. If you're advanced and ready for your ailerons, bank and yank, or just want to have some fun in your backyard, go ahead and try this Delta. And by all means, please feel free to post an article or a review on this and tell me what you think on this. Chat it up on Facebook and also check out uh, flighttest.com. Things are constantly changing. New things are coming up, new features like the most recent one which allows you to search articles based on time and not just content, which is really, really cool.
Well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, button this up, put a new battery on it, and give it a test fly. Uh, look forward to talking to you guys next time. Mm -hmm.